give you the announcements now uh, because we have a guest speaker in the house and we want to give her as much time as we possibly can for her to minister freely as though she's in her own home. Amen. So I need your attention just for a little while. Uh, someone say Tuesday. Tuesday we meet here, the women meet here with Pastor Maggie in studying the book of Daniel starting at 7 o'clock. All women are invited. All right? All women are invited. It's, a, it's an amazing moment to sit with your peers, to laugh, cry, learn, learn some more, and then create a devotional for your personal life moving forward. Right? On Wednesday, Wednesday we have several things happening in this building. Wednesday we have... Uh, VBS up until August, uh, there you go, up until August the 7th. Come on, somebody, cheer on the VBS. <laughs> Why is VBS important? VBS is important because it's the next generation of what the Lord has called us to do. Amen? If we don't instruct them in the ways of the Lord, what then? Amen, somebody. So if you're not here in the physical body, would you encourage the team of uh, VBS with your prayers that the Lord, the Holy Spirit would bring them and that the teachers would nurture them, teach them, encourage them in the ways of the Lord. Amen. So this is for all children up until the fourth grade. We start at seven o'clock. They have an amazing presentation downstairs. All the teachers are excited. We've been doing this since uh, early in July. Uh, it runs for a couple of weeks, but nonetheless, bring your neighbors, bring your neighbors' kids, bring the kids from school, post it somewhere on social media, and bring the kids here and let them be blessed. Amen? Amen. Also on Wednesday, we have our youth, our youth church. Amen? Right? Next time I say youth, that's for y'all to scream, shout, jump all over the chairs. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Right, I can't. Right. Wednesday night is our youth night. All right, there ain't no third time. Y'all missed it. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. Pastor Andrew and Pastor Desiree do an amazing job with our youth on Wednesday nights as well. Starting at 7 o'clock. Amen. <clears throat> While VBS, and this is for this month, while VBS is happening downstairs, the youth is meeting up here in the main sanctuary. And then we have Armor Bearers classes. Armor Bearers classes for all the men from 18 to 80. We meet upstairs. Why is, why is an Armor Bearer class uh, important? I'm gonna tell you why. It's not that we're hiring, it's not that we're looking for Armor Bearers, but if men, you don't understand why you come here, you missed it. We are protectors of the house. We're protectors of our own house. We're protectors in the spirit realm. We're protectors in the physical realm. And that's all I'm going to tell you. If you want to learn some more, come on in Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. We meet upstairs. And then every other Wednesday, you see, I didn't forget. Wait, you see? This Wednesday. This Wednesday as well, we have young adults. Amen? Right. We have young adults. Why do we have so many things going on? Because we want to make sure that you have the tools to be built up and edified in your faith. Yes, yes. Right? We'll make ourselves uncomfortable for you to learn something comfortable. Amen? And then this is, this is the church alive, baby. Every Sunday at 2.30 in the afternoon, we have Iglesia Viva. <laughs> Iglesia Viva is our Spanish-speaking congregation. The Lord is doing amazing things there as well. If you see the Lord manifesting gifts, manifesting his presence, healings, signs and wonders here, the same thing is going on at 2.30 at Iglesia Viva. So we ask you to help pray. If anything else, just pray in agreement that the Lord continues to do something amazing in the Spanish-speaking community in and around us. Amen? 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 Am I forgetting anything? Am I forgetting anything? School supplies. Starting next Sunday, you know this is our season that we do our back to school rally. We do our back to school uh, collections to help our children. We don't need backpacks. We're going to get the backpacks. But if you would, bring reams of paper. 
not printing paper, but reams of paper with lines on them for our students. Pencils, pens, crayons, glue, antiseptic uh, little bottles, uh, tissues, all the necessities for our kids. And then we pack up the bags and we send them to be ready on their first day of school. Would you do that with us? We appreciate your tithe, we appreciate your offering. Thank you for your obedience and your faithfulness. If it's not for you, we as a community would not be here. So I just ask you, after your tithe and your offering, that you would consider buying supplies for children of the house. And then when the need here is met, we're going to send it out to somebody else and make sure other children get blessed as well. Would you do that? Would you consider that? All right. Here's a couple of instructions for today. Would you please stand with me? Today's Worship Sunday. Thank you. Today's Worship Sunday. The rule is to bring your best worship from your heart unto the Lord. That's it. I don't care what we've gone through during the week. God has been good. You know why he's been good? You know how I know he's been good? You're here. Amen. So with every heart bowed, and every eye closed. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this morning. We thank you, Father, for your presence ahead of time. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here with us ahead of time. I pray that as we present worship to you today, Father, that you meet us there wherever we are, that your presence engulfs us, that you speak to our heart, you speak to our situation that you speak to our happy self and you speak to our broken self. Lord, thank you that through worship we are healed in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirit, man. Lord, thank you that in worship today we get this amazing opportunity to lift your name on high. And today we will do that, Lord. I thank you for our worship team. Lord, I bless every single one of these singers and musicians. Lord, I pray. Lord, I pray that through song and dance, we see, we witness, we feel, we know your tangible presence. Lord, we thank you for these things. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we all say, Amen. let's worship the Lord together.
the fear to leave. I'm not waiting for depression to flee. Say, I am whole, I am whole by the wonder of the cross. Jesus did it. Come on, you got to declare it this morning. Say, I'm not waiting for the sea.
crush the darkness made a fool of death and grace your king jesus you made royals out of slaves and now there's breakthrough now there's freedom in your name you gave us power and the keys to do the worshiping the Lord and going before him full of joy and peace and love. I love the Lord. I don't know about you this morning, but one of the things that we talk about often is everything that we do in this house, when we pick up our microphones, that everything that comes out of our mouth is worship to the Lord. So listen, sometimes you're not going to like it. You're not going to be a fan of it. It's going to be too loud. We got earplugs for those that think it's too loud. Um, but I just want to encourage you. Don't look to us. 
we can't do anything. Look to him. He does miracles. He turns lives around. He delivers the sick. He delivers those that are broken. And he changes us even when we're filthy, we're ugly, we got mess in our lives. He turns everything around. Say for my good. Say for my good. He's making things better. Say it out loud. He's making things better for my good. So this morning, fix your eyes to him and worship him.
Jesus, the name that does all things, it breaks every chain. Oh, we declare it, death could not hold you. The veil torn before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. You declare. Sing it out. Say for you up. Come on, lift your worship up. Sing it out to him. Say you have.
into your presence this morning and we bring you our praise we bring you our worship and adoration holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty oh Father God move in this place today Holy Spirit we send the word of healing. Oh, Jesus, we send the word of restoration, renewal of strength. Touch your people in this house, Father God. All over this place this morning, lift your hands with me. Lift your hands and open your heart. Far too often, we just sing. Picture yourself at the throne, at the feet of God Almighty, your creator, and just thank him. We have so much to be grateful for. Give him some honor this morning. We thank you, Father God. As we pray this morning, I want to ask that you remember Pastor Leon Batchelor and his dear wife, Robbie. On Friday night, Pastor Leon was preaching and he suffered a massive heart attack. He collapsed, was rushed to the hospital with multiple collapsed veins in and around and behind his heart. Three doctors would not operate. They said he would die. They found a doctor to operate and he came out of the catheterization procedure alive. Yeah. 
He's still in need of our prayers and of a strong recovery. He's still in the ICU. But how many know our God does miracles? Our God is a miracle worker. If he can touch him on that table, he can touch him in the ICU. He didn't bring him this far to leave him. Brother Jeffrey, Sharon, their family, our prayers continue to be with them. Sister Suzanne, who injured her knee again this week, our prayers are with you, my sister. Um, Sister Loretta, for your liver, we speak to that right now in the name of Jesus. All over the place this morning, bow your heads with me as we pray. Oh, Father God, we come to you, and we claim the promise you gave us. Oh, Jesus, by your stripes, we are made whole. We are walking in health, wholeness, recovery. We speak to Pastor Leon right now, and we command his veins to open. We command the blood to flow through his arteries as they were created to. Don't even let him need more surgeries, Father God. Do your work in his life. Comfort his family, his wife, his kids, his grandkids. Be with them. Father God, we send the word of healing to the members of our congregation and church family that need you. Touch them right where they are this morning. Let them be watching and say, the power of the Holy Spirit filled my house and touched me. I thank you and I praise you for this, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Give God some praise in this place, Church Alive. Is he worthy of your praise? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Welcome to Church Alive. Woo! I don't know about you. But it is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Have you felt the move of the Spirit? He is an everlasting help in time of trouble. What an awesome God we serve. At this time, we're going to dismiss our children's and nursery. Please go to your classes. Be blessed. And as they do that, will you turn to your neighbor and just show them some of that church alive love? Let them know it's good to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. If you see a new face, just, oh, if you, you're good. If you see a new face, tell them hi. Thank you to our teachers. You guys rock. I tell you, every time these guys start playing, I just want to dance. I was like, yeah, go ahead, do that again. Like, oh my goodness. Isn't, aren't we so blessed with our worship team, Church Alive? Isn't it amazing? God has blessed our socks off, and he's going to continue to bless us this morning. If you would rise with me, we have a special guest minister in the house this morning. She is a mighty woman of God. Let me take just a minute to introduce dear Pastor Sandy McLaren. Her and her husband, Daryl, served the Lord faithfully together for many years, 30, 30 plus years. And we are so blessed to have had them in our lives. Pastor Daryl was a dear, dear friend of Pastor Tim. I, I can tell you this with certainty, Sandy, with certainty, Church Alive, 
if not for Pastor Daryl McLaren and Pastor Sandy McLaren, Church Alive, as you know it, would not exist today. There were times in Pastor Tim's life and in his ministry where he needed a touch. He needed a word. He needed to be re revigorated, you know, filled up. There were times when he was a traveling minister where he was about to give up. And then he would find himself in Asheville, North Carolina at Harvest Time Church. And he would leave, he told me every time, he would leave feeling refreshed. He would leave feeling strengthened. And he would go back out there with vigor. And it is because of that that Church Alive even exists today. We had an opportunity to be with Daryl three years ago, shortly before his passing. And just those last few days we got to spend with him will forever be a memory etched in my heart. His wonderful wife is leading their congregation. She is anointed. She is filled with the Spirit. And she is going to give you a word today you, were not, you will not forget. So please put your hands together and welcome our guest speaker, Pastor Sandy McLaren. Now I want you to raise your hands and give God all the praise and the honor and the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place today. Holy Spirit, it would be just a normal service if we didn't have you, but you make it supernatural. And we just speak the supernatural presence of God in this place today. I speak healings in this service. I speak deliverances in this service today. And I speak breakthroughs in the power of the Holy Ghost today. If you're filled with the baptism in the Holy Ghost, just begin to speak in your language right now. In the name of the Lord, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Don't be surprised if you don't get healed during the service. We've been experiencing many miracles and healings in our services at home at Harvest Time Asheville. We had a, we had a man that went had several misplaced discs in his back. He did everything he was supposed to do and was going to have to have surgery, and he testified last Sunday in the service that the power of God hit him. He went to the doctor, and the doctor said, I don't know what happened, but you don't have to have surgery. Your discs are fine. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The healer is in the house. The healer is in the house. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor TJ, for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. Don't deserve one ounce of it, but thank you so much. I had the best time with you and your beautiful wife, Tiffany, yesterday. I tell you, you Church Alive, you live up to your name. I, when, when Pastor Tim told me several years ago that he was changing the name of the church and he he told me several of the names that he was going to possibly pick. Uh, I said, Lord, you're, if you pick Church Alive, you're going to have to live up to that. You can't be no dead church now. You can't have no dead praise, no dead altar services. You're going to have to have the presence of God moving. And I tell you, I experienced the presence of God in this sanctuary this morning. And I, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, for allowing the Holy Spirit to move as he wills. There's a lot of places today uh, the Holy Spirit isn't welcome. And you've got a church this morning that welcomes the Holy Spirit. And so be grateful that you have a pastor 
that believes in the moving of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, I want to thank Pastor Tim. I know that he's preaching this morning, and I want to thank him for uh, calling and asking me to come and uh, fill his pulpit this morning. That is a great, great honor. Uh, Pastor Tim and I have been friends for over 30, 35 years. And so uh, I love your pastor. I love, I'll tell you what I love about him. I love his Pentecostal spirit. I love that he wants a move of God and that no matter what storms hit, no matter what challenges hit, he's like an ox. He goes straight towards the storm. He goes straight. And that's what we've got to be today in these last days. We've got to be ox. Uh, you know the story of the ox, don't you? The ox, and he doesn't go around the storm when it hits. He goes straight through the storm. Because if he goes around the storm, it takes longer to get around the storm. So he battles the storm out. He's focused on what's ahead. And you know what? He gets through the storm faster because he's focused. And Jesus is looking for a remnant, and he's looking for a church that will be focused going through the storm. And I believe he's got some oxen in here today. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and say, I don't know what you've come for, but I've come for a blessing. Amen, amen. It is my honor. My name is Sandy McLaren, and I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. Amen, the beautiful mountains. Now, I'm originally, I'm a beach girl. I was born in West Palm Beach, Florida. I was raised on the outer banks of North Carolina. And then I married a mountain man. And I moved to the mountains. Uh, Daryl McLaren was a mighty man of God. I had 32 years and four months to be married to that great man of God. Uh, I love marriage. I love the institution of marriage. And I pray that every one of you that are married today don't take advantage of one moment of your marriage. That you work to have a great marriage. And you have a great marriage when Jesus is the center of it all. That makes a great marriage. Amen. So I love marriage. And uh, don't get me wrong, there were times where I had plotted Brother McLaren's death. How could I take him out quickly? And I'm sure there were times he was plotting mine. But we had a great, great, strong marriage. And um, his life, it, it, it was a suddenly happening. And um, I grieved. I couldn't believe it. And... Um, and I had two choices. I either get stuck or I go forward. And that's what I'm going to be speaking to you this morning is two words that changed my life and is still changing my life today. Almost three years ago is when Pastor McLaren went on to be with the Lord. Eight months before I lost my mother, she lived on the same street as we did. And it was a suddenly death. And so I can tell you this, that my season of storms and trials were heavy and they were deep. Just the personal emotional things that I had to go through and I had to adjust and make decisions every day. Let me tell you something with this walk with God. It's a decision every day. You just don't come to the altar and come to the cross and you... Make a decision right there, and then you leave, and there's no other decisions to make. Every single day is a decision whether you are going to go forward or get stuck. We live in a world, and we live in a dark world, and it, there's a battle going on, and there's a battle going on for your soul and my soul. So that's why it's so important that every day that we make a decision to live for Christ. No matter what we're facing. So today I'm going to be speaking to you on two words. But God. 
These are the two words that have been used more in my life in the almost three years than any other two words. I have stood upon these two words, and I have constant reminders when I use the, these two words that God is faithful and that God has the final say-so. So, Holy Spirit, we thank you today for being in this house. We thank you for being in the hearts of these people. And I believe with all of my heart that there are people here today that are, that are in the valley of decision, that are facing storms, that are facing physical battles, but God. You are going to reveal to them, you're going to open their spiritual eyes and their heart to the revelation that God can do anything. And he will if we believe. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. How many of you can say today that you've been through some stuff in life? Some stuff that has tried to take you out. Some stuff that has tried to take your vision and your purpose. Some stuff that has tried to distract you from doing God's plan in your life. It's tried to convince you, stuff will convince you that it's never going to get any better in your life. But God. I was in that season like no other season in my life. And coming out of that season and every day I'm faced with a challenge and a decision where I have to say, but God. If you struggle with anything I say today, I want you to understand these two words. I want you to receive and I want you to believe these two words today because they will change your life. They will change your attitude. They will change the outcome of your life. But God. I want you to turn with me in your scriptures to Psalm 73 and verse 26. Do you all use the hard copy Bible anymore? Okay, okay, I still use the hard copy. Oh, I like that you young people use the hard copy. Thank you. I know we use the phone, their phone and all of that, and we got the screens. We can cheat with the screens. But there's nothing like the hard copy Word of God because you can mark it up. You can do all kinds of things in your Bible. Amen? Okay, Psalm 73, 26. This is the verse that I have stood on. For almost three years, one night in my desperation and in my, in, my, in my grieving, in my crying out to God, I said, I've got to have a word from you. I've got to have a word from you. And I, I was, have you ever been that desperate that you go to your Bible and you just open it up and you put your finger on it? And I don't recommend it, but I did it. I did it. And I, I came to the book of Psalms. And I look down, and this is the verse I believe with all in my heart that the Holy Spirit gave me for my season. Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Remember those two words. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Meaning you're going to have times in your life where your heart is broken. You're going to have times in your life where your flesh is weak. But God is your strength and he is your portion. You can't get around not having trials, not having tribulations, not having testings. You're going to have them. If you're a child of God, that is the only way that you can grow in God is to go through the test. It's kind of like the little boy in the first grade. Every year he would not take the test. And every year he was in first grade. This was back when you had to stay. Now they just bump you up no matter what you're doing. And so he was a senior in high school, and every, all the kindergartners were in there looking at him because he failed to take the test. 
That's what not going through the tests and challenges that you face will do. They will promote you. Or if you don't go through them, you will be demoted and be stuck in your past. God wants some people today to get beyond their past and get to their future. But, the word but. Now, I want you to know what but I'm speaking about today. I'm speaking about the word but, the conjunction. It's a conjunction word, but let me tell you something how great this word is. When you put God behind the word but, it becomes a holy conjunction. But God. But God appears over 40 times in the Old and the New Testament. This phrase appears always after a statement of defeat, of sickness, or an emergency in life. If you read your Bible, and it's full of stories of how men and women had a but God experience in their life. Where they were facing hell itself, but God came through. I want you to know today that the God you serve wants to be a but God in your life. These two powerful words captures the nature and the compassion of God. These two words capture the mercy and the grace of God. And God, because of these words, he will resurrect, he will restore, and he'll make all things new in your life. When all else fails, God comes through. All seems lost that you look at and all... Everything that you hear at this time or maybe this season might seem like it's not a good word. I want to tell you today, but God, but God, these two words have changed the course of countless lives. Against all impossibility, running to what seems logical, what seems rational or expected. See, the natural is always what you expect. The spiritual is the but God part. These two powerful words have intervened throughout history to empower people to transform their lives and change circumstances and alter destinies and perform miracles. Brought deliverance and I could go on and on and on. That's why it's so important that you have faith and hope. Expectation and anticipation and that it remains high in your difficult times of life. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. You have to talk to yourself every day. Whether you are facing financial struggles and we've all been there. I can remember, I can remember when Daryl and I were, we hadn't been married long. And we had to live by faith in every area, and that includes our food. Have you ever been there where you had to pray in your food? And I can remember one day praying in our apartment that we were living in, and, and we didn't have any groceries. And here we are, these big evangelists traveling all over the nation preaching the gospel and didn't even have food in our cupboards. And I said, oh, God, what are we going to do? And you know, there's a, there's a certain bit of pride that you have in your life that you, wanna, you don't want to be asking people. And uh, I prayed, and Daryl prayed, and I got this phone call from this lady who I hardly even knew, and it was a black sister. And she said, Sister Sandy, God spoke to me, told me to buy you some groceries. And I don't know why it was a surprise. That's what we pray for. Isn't it amazing what we pray for sometimes? And then when God does it, we act so surprised about it. Well, I didn't even know you could do that, God. So she comes with the groceries. Well, I'm so embarrassed. I do not want her to come in the apartment. So I open the sliding glass door to receive her groceries. And she said, uh-uh. God told me to come in and put the groceries up. And I went, oh, Jesus. I tell you, there's sometimes that God will humble you. The circumstance will humble you. And I said, no, 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 that's okay, that's okay. No, I'm going to be obedient to what God tells me to do, sis. Get out of the way. Comes into my apartment, goes straight to my kitchen, and opens my refrigerator door and looks and say, uh-huh. 
God spoke to me. God spoke to me. And I, and I said, thank you, Sister Mimi. Thank you. And she put all of our groceries up. Had another time that we didn't have any money. I'm telling you, but God. Didn't have any finances. And a man come up to our apartment. I was getting ready in my bathroom, and we had a window in the bathroom. And here's this big old man knocking at the window of my bathroom. And I, I get up and tell Daryl, and he goes to the door. And um, he answers the door, and this, he was a mechanic mechanic and he comes to the door and says brother Daryl God just spoke to me as I was working under the hood of a car and told me to give this to you and he gave him an envelope and he Daryl said well thank you thank you and he leaves and we open the envelope and there's five one hundred dollar bills honey God can speak to anybody you just have to be obedient to receive you have to be obedient to receive These two words, but God, can restore your home, can restore your life. I believe we have entered the season of gross darkness in the world. And the word says, and deep darkness to people. There's a darkness on people like never before. People don't value life anymore. People are into themselves. They're, they don't want to surrender to a living God. They want... They don't want to surrender to anybody. They don't want to answer to anybody. That darkness has come in. And I tell you, the word says that one day that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I say today, either you bow now or you bow later. But every knee will bow to Jesus. And he is the Lord. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. But in that same verse, it says deep darkness, the people, that darkness will come upon the people. It says in that same verse in Isaiah 62, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. But that meaning in the deep darkness of our world today, that there's a remnant of people that will not bend nor bow and that there will be a glory upon their lives that the world will see. And it's the glory of the Lord. It's not your glory. It's his glory. And that glory will come into the darkness and drive darkness out. That's why we've got to have a people today and churches today that still believe in the power of prayer, that still believe in praying at the altars, still believe in having a personal relationship with Jesus and studying and fasting. We've got to have a church to arise with the glory of the Lord. The church must go to a new level in faith to get through these trials and testings. We've not even seen the testings that the church is going to go through. Some people are growing in their faith, but many have stopped growing in their faith. Because the only way that you can grow in your faith, church, is by working it, by activating it, by putting it to practice. You can talk about faith all you want. And we have a lot of people that talk about faith, a lot of people that talk about prayer, that talk about this and that, but don't do anything. we got to have a people that starts practicing their faith when they're going through hell itself. And other people have got to see it. It's a testimony of our, our hope in God. You can work and grow your faith by declaring what the word says about your situation and about you. That's how we overcome is by the word of our testimony, the word of God, knowing what God says about us. Some say today that I need greater faith. Listen to me. They need greater faith. I think we've all said that at times in our life. I need greater faith. No, you just need to use the faith you have. And that faith will grow in your life that as you step out for God and you use it, whether it's a personal thing, whether it's a family situation, whether it's a calling, whatever it is, you have got to start using the faith that you have. So I tell you this today, whether you have little faith or big faith, it's still faith. Just use it. Just use it. Well, I have little faith. Well, it's faith. Use it. Have you ever really listened to people's conversations? 
and how they speak and how they talk about their, their trials, their mountains, their sicknesses. Sometimes people have more communication with their problems than they do with the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. Ask the Holy Spirit every day to open your ears and open your heart to discernment and, and listen to what people are really saying. Be very careful about who you listen to and what information that you receive in your mind and in your spirit. It will affect your outcome in life. Everyone is facing some kind of giant in your life and, and you must be very careful on how you speak in your trial, how you speak when you face a mountain. There's some people in your life, and, and I tell you, everybody has an answer for everybody. Everybody has the answer for your problem. Honey, there's some people, and I guess they're in all in Asheville. I know that you don't have any here at Church Alive. But, honey, we've got some gossipers in Asheville. we got some people that love to talk in Asheville. Honey, some of their tongues are so long, they could lick a skillet through a picket fence. <laughs> They've got the gift of gossip, honey, but they don't, have, they don't have overcoming power for their own life. But they've got it for everybody else. Watch those people. Watch them. Bless them. Bless them and walk on. Walk on. Don't let it get down into your spirit, man, into your heart. To say and believe, but God takes faith and assurance that God's promises will manifest in your life. We need but God faith today. I speak but God faith in this house today. David was never, never bothered by his Goliath because he knew how big his God was. I don't care how big your Goliath is today. Know how big your God is. In 1 Samuel 17, 45, it says, David looked at the giant. And this is sometimes how we have to speak. we got to get ugly with the giant. He says, thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and a shield. But devil, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And this day you will be conquered by my God. And that's how we need to approach things and trials when they come to us. We need to get ugly and we need to get, we need to get authoritative with the word with it. And speak to that mountain. For life and death is in the power of tongue. It's not in your heart. Life and death is not in your heart. It's in, it's in, your, in what you say and what you believe. What are you speaking today that's bringing life? Or what are you speaking today that's bringing death to your situation? And that's the biggest problem that I see in the church today. Is what we believe and what we take in in our minds. Because your thoughts define your reality. We have hundreds of thoughts every day. Can I say amen? Every day. That are trying to make us believe that something, something other than what God says about us and for us. And the enemy tries to place thoughts into our minds continually. And they are fierce. You look at people today that are living victorious. And let me tell you, those are the people that are normally going through the biggest battles. The people that you see with the smiles on their faces and the hallelujahs and their hands raised. And, and it doesn't ever seem like they're going through something. And we'll misjudge that person. And they say, ha, ah, they've never faced anything. Honey, they're the ones that are usually going through the trials like none other. But they know who their God is. And they know how to use that holy conjunction but God in their life. Proverbs 23, 7, it says, For as he thinketh in heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. In other words, the enemy is always going to tell you things that aren't true. And that are harmful for you, church. He's a liar and he's the father of lies. He's going to tell you, let me tell you, there's a great, there's a great exiting of the church today. Because people are relying on the arm of flesh and what they think they can do and not what God can do. 
God established the body of Christ for a purpose because he knew that in the end days we were going to need each other for strength and encouragement. Assemble yourselves together in the house of the Lord and encourage one another. Warn each other of the times that are coming. If ever the house of God needed to be packed full, it needs to be today. And you matter in the house of God. Listen to me. I'm going to be a pastor right now. You matter in the house of God. When you're not here, it matters that you're not here because there will be somebody to come in that needed you. That needed you. You've got to look at yourself differently and know that you are a child of the king and that you have a purpose in life. And if it's nothing but to sit in the pew and encourage people, we need it. The church needs it. And you're church alive, so you have to be here. You have to be here. Oh, the, if the enemy can get you to think wrong, he will get you to act wrong and he'll get you to respond wrong. The enemy never wants you to get past your problem. The problem is I'm sick. And a lot of times people get stuck right there. I'm sick. If they would just move on, but God is the healer. I'm in financial difficulty, but God is Jehovah Jireh. He never wants you to get the but God in your life. He always wants you to stay before. the. He wants you to stay in that problem of but God where the problem is. And a lot of church people today are stuck in the problem. We've got to get the peace of God in our hearts and trust that what God says is true and that we believe it and that in his season we will see it come to pass. You've got to get to the place in your life where you not only read the Word of God, but you act on the Word of God. That you believe what the Word says about you. Without God in your life, you have no peace. In Matthew 19, 26, it says, But Jesus looked at him and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. But God... Stop measuring God with your limitations. The only limitations that can stop God today is unbelief. That you get to a place in your life where you never believe that God can come through for you. I want you to know that he not only wants to come through for you, but he wants to do extraordinary things in your life that you cannot comprehend. You're worthy of it. He died for you, and he wants to show his glory through your life. Sometimes we just need to get our butt in the right place. Are you hearing me? And now I'm speaking about both butts. Sometimes you just need to get your butt in the right place. We're three parts. We're body, soul, and spirit. Our soul is our emotions. And Paul described the battle of the flesh in Romans 7 and verses 15 to 23. I'm not going to read it. But I'm going to tell you a story about the flesh and the spirit, okay? Before you were born again, it was just your mind and your flesh having a good time. They've been with you forever. They're one. They're in agreement. They're married. They've had no problem, the mind and the flesh. Whatever they say, you do. They become strong in your life. You work in harmony and unity. But one day, you came to know Jesus. And Jesus changed everything. And when you came to know Jesus, the Spirit of God moved in your life. Huh? So the mind and the flesh, they start asking each other, uh, whoa, who just moved in? Who just moved in here? And the spirit introduces himself. I'm the new owner of this house. And the flesh says, what did you just say? 
And the Spirit says, I just told you. You're going to have to submit yourself and surrender yourself, and you're going to have to die. Because I'm the new owner. I'm the Spirit of God, and I'm going to rise up in this person, and I'm going to do great things in this person, but you can't be a part of it because you're enmity against, me, against God. You can't have no part. Well, the flesh and the mind start conversating with one another and say, we can't have this. We can't have it. This is war. So you wonder why you have warfare every day? It's because the flesh and the spirit are at war with one another. The flesh wants to have his way, but the spirit wants to have God's way. So that's where the decision making comes every single day in your life. Who am I going to submit to? Who am I going to surrender to? Am I going to surrender to the flesh and what my mind says? Am I going to act out on that? Because my flesh just told me to do this, and I know good and well it's not right. Because the Spirit's convicting me and telling me not to do it. But I don't think it would hurt. There's a war going on in your spirit man today. Who's going to win out? Every single day. And so there's a war in Romans 8.8. 8, it says, and they that are in the flesh can't please God. One's going to please God in your life and one's not. And in Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. Every single day that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And as we mature in Christ, there will be battles that will rise above because we pursue God and not the flesh. The only way that you can overcome your battle is by pursuing God and allowing the Spirit of God in you to rise up and, and take rule in your life. The flesh and the mind and the Spirit will battle for you the rest of your life. And I would say to you, as hard as it is, and let me say it's hard, every day surrender yourself to Jesus. Surrender yourself to the word of God, to the will of God. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, he says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Every thought we have to take captive. And what does the word, my daddy was a 27-year military man. He was in the Coast Guard. So I was raised in a military strict home. So when daddy said to do something, Miss Sandy did it. And the word captive is a military word. And so that means that we're soldiers in this army now and we have to fight. And we have an enemy to fight. And it's not your brother and your sisters. It's the, it's the prince of darkness. It's the prince of palities of the air. That you're fighting. It's demon spirits that you're fighting every single day. We have an assignment to protect our minds and to protect our heart with the word of God. Using the word as a daily weapon to defeat the enemy that attack us. Ephesians 6 says, put on the whole armor of God. And some Christians today are only wearing half of their armor. And they wonder why they're defeated. They wonder why they can't get it together. It's because they're not putting on the whole armor of God. One of the greatest armors is the breast of righteousness. Because the breast of righteousness, they're all good. The helmet of salvation. The belting yourself with the truth, the word of God. The shield of faith. Above all, have the shield of faith. But that, that, that breastplate of righteousness shields your heart from wickedness, from making wrong decisions. When you have the righteousness of God, you're in right standing with God, and you want what He wants, and you desire what He wants. That's why it's so important as a soldier that you straighten up, look straight, and be focused, and do what God has called you to do. Put on that full armor of God. What we allow to stay in our minds will affect our heart. And what you believe will affect your outcome. Let me say that again. Somebody needs to hear that. What you allow to stay in your minds will affect your heart. 
and what you will believe will affect your outcome. When the enemy comes in like a flood and starts telling you stuff, will you remember there's another answer and that answer is, but God. When the devil tells you you're lost, you remember what Romans 5, 8 says, but God finds us. When the devil tells you that you're wounded and you're not healed of your past, Psalms 147, 3 says, but God heals us. When the devil tells you that you're insecure and you have no identity in Christ, Psalms 139, 14 says, but God gives us confidence in who we are. When the devil comes against you and tries to make you lose your way, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, but God guides us and he gives us all the understanding. Lean not on on your own understanding. When God comes against you with your relationships, with your friendships, with your marriage. It says that, it says in Proverbs 13, 20, it says, but God gives us divine connections. If you will surrender yourself and live a life that's holy unto God, he will give you those Holy Ghost connections in your life that you need. And honey, it might be some man at the grocery store that's checking out your groceries. And those Holy Ghost connections will lead you. A a righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. And you can be going through that grocery, that line, and that grocery attendant can say one word that will change your life that you've been praying for. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God in your life. Be sensitive to what God says and act upon it. When you're bound, when the devil tells you you're bound and you'll never be free, it says in Galatians 5, 1, but God sets us free. Whatever the devil says, God has a but God. When the devil says that you'll never have enough, that you'll never financially be free, Oh, in Philippians 4, 19, it says, but my God provides. When things look impossible in your life, Matthew 19, 26, but God makes all things possible. Sometimes the only two words that you can say in your vocabulary when you're going through something is either, oh, me, or but God. And I want you to change it today to but God. In Exodus 15, 26, it says, when you, when you are going through affliction, and I've been through sickness. I've been through sicknesses in my life where I've had to say, God, you are the God that heals me. I've gotten that report in my life where the doctor has given a bad report. And I've had to lay it before the Lord and say, this is what the doctor says, but God, this is what your word says. You are the God that heals me. When you haven't received your healing, but it's coming. Do you believe it? It's coming. I don't care if you've been diagnosed with it three times. Honey, Nahum 1.9 says, I will destroy that thing, and that thing will never come back on you again. In the name of Jesus. When you need a financial miracle, And you've been faithful paying your tithes and giving your offerings. Did you just hear what I said? Now the pastor's coming out in me again. When you've been faithful paying your tithes and your offerings. hmm, And you're having to look for spare change on the floorboard of your car. You're doing everything you know to do, but yet you you are being tested like... Like none other financially. I want you to know that but God is going to see you through and bless you. You stay faithful and let God come through for you. Don't you start thinking in the natural. Thinking I have to do this myself. You can only go so far in the natural. But if you believe God and trust God. And declare his word over your life. And believe it and act on it. Honey he'll part the Red Sea for you. Be faithful. Be faithful 
in your serving him. Be faithful in your giving. Be faithful in your worship with God and your prayer life with God. Honey, he'll change things for you. In Deuteronomy 28.2, it says blessings will come upon you and overtake you. How many need those kind of blessings today? I need some blessings that, were, uh, that are going to overtake me. When your child is running and you don't know where he or she is, and you don't know who they're with. Isaiah 49, 25 says, but God, I will save your children. Quit talking. Quit talking about how bad they are. They ain't nothing but a drug addict. They, they don't do, they're the laziest things I ever saw in my life. Well, they might be. They might be, and you see it in the natural, but don't you speak it. Because you, what you speak, you bring life to. They're lazy. They'll continue to be lazy. Won't you start speaking over them? Hmm, I see how they're acting, but I see them. I see them prosperous. I see them having a good job, a good paying job. I see them blessing their mom and daddy. I see them, come on now parents, I see them blessing their mom and daddy. I see them blessing the house of God. Your drug addict, your alcoholic husband, wife, start declaring over them that drink will not have them, but my husband, my wife will drink of the spirit of God and their hands will be lifted high in the house of God, worshiping him. I declare that that bondage kneels at Jesus' name. What you speak, what you believe, will bring life or death. You remember the three Hebrew children? Because in the Bible, you can read about all people, all these different people that have gone through but God experiences. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I just love them. I love them. Honey, they were faced with a but God encounter in their life. You think you have problems? Honey, be one of them. Nebuchadnezzar builds an idol to be worshipped as tall as into this, as tall as a nine-story building. Nine feet wide of this image. And he tells his kingdom when the music starts playing. I want everybody in my kingdom to begin to worship this idol. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego served on Nebuchadnezzar's, as if I, I'm, I'm going to make it easy for you to understand, on his city board. They worked closely with Nebuchadnezzar. And some of the people on the board, you know, those, gossip, those gossipers, they ran to Nebuchadnezzar and they said, uh, hey, these three guys on your board, they're, they said they're not going to bow to your image. They're not going to worship this image. Nebuchadnezzar the king says, what? Not my, Neb not, not my Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He goes to him and he says, I heard that you weren't going to bow. And these three young men said, you got that right. There's only one God that we're going to bow to. Nebuchadnezzar got so mad, and he said, you'll either bow to me or you will go into the furnace. And they said, whether or not God delivers us, we will not bow. And my God, I speak that over this church, that no matter what happens, that you will be a people that will always stand for God and his righteousness. <laughs> that you will always stand for what the word says, and that you'll never compromise that there'll be a remnant that will say, but God, he either delivers me or not delivers me, but I will not bow. And that's what society does in these last days. Their society is putting the pressure of life on us to make decisions that are not of God. I tell you, church, today, do not bend nor bow. And you do not know what to bend nor bow to if you don't know the word of God. You'll bend to anything if you don't know the word of God. Know your word. Get into that word. 
He was so furious, he told his men to make that furnace seven times hotter. And the men said, God can bring us out of this unhurt. But even if he doesn't choose to rescue us, we will not worship your golden image. And they didn't. And they were thrown into the furnace. But let me tell you something. When you're thrown into the furnace, you will not be alone. There'll be somebody there with you. And Nebuchadnezzar shouted as he looked and he answered it. He said, I see four men loosed in that fire, in the midst of that fire. And they are not hurt. And the fourth man is like the Son of God. Their faith and their trust in God, listen to me, their faith and their trust in God didn't guarantee them deliverance but God. They didn't know whether they were going to burn, but it didn't matter. But God is still God. And it says, and the sad traps and the administrators, the governors and the kings and the counselors gathered together. And they saw these men coming out of this furnace. And it says that their bodies, on whose bodies the fire had no power. Their hair on their head wasn't even singed. Nor did their garments smell like smoke. I'm telling you today, I don't care what you're facing. God can bring you out of that situation and you not even smell like it. The only thing that you'll smell like is victory. Is victory. Oh, I can just imagine those three Hebrew children in that fire. Oh, looking at each other. Looking at Jesus in that fire. And all of a sudden, a song starts coming out of their mouth. You remember that old song? This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Because this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. You might be battling sickness today. You might be battling finances today. You might be battling a decision that you need to make in your family today. But I'm telling you, if you'll put but, but God in that situation, God said, I will fight your battle. The battle isn't yours. I'll fight your battle for you. And you'll come out smelling like victory, not smoke. They knew their God. They had a revelation of who he was because they had a relationship with God. When you get a revelation on who God is and what the word says and you know who he is, you won't get stuck in your present or your past, but you'll be able to move forward in God. Some of you need but God faith today. The enemy has had you stuck in your present or your past, and he wants to take you. He wants to take you somewhere you've never been before in the spirit. Some of you have been stuck in your problem for too long. Your faith has grown weak. The little faith that you have. I say, but God, how do you fight your battle? You lift your hands and you begin to praise them in the midst of the storm like Paul and Silas did when they were in the jail cell and, and they, were, they were locked, their feet were locked and bound. And honey, I can just imagine them sitting there with their little feet going back and forth. This is how I fight my battles. Devil, you're not going to take my praise. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Woo! It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. You might be here today and you might be sick in your body, but I want you to know you need to look at the devil and say, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. What are you surrounded by? You're surrounded by the power and the presence of God in your life. You're surrounded by the blood of Jesus in your life. You're surrounded by the cross and the Holy Ghost. You're surrounded by the angel armies of heaven that are there to fight for you. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. Stand to your feet. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Woo! It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Because this is how I find my battle. I'm going to praise you. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. But God, say it, but God. That's how you fight your battles. But God, but God. In 1 Samuel 23 and 14, it says Saul was after David. The devil's after you today. He's after you. And it says that David had to run to the hills into the desert. But God, listen, but God did not give David into his hands. Why? Because David wouldn't stop worshiping God. He was a worshiper. Learn to worship God in the midst of your storms and your trials. And God will come through and he will not deliver you into the hands of the enemies. I don't want you to be a people today that is stuck in your wilderness, wilderness experience. I want you to move on and let God open new doors for you and close the ones that need to be closed. And some of those doors need to be people, places, and things that you need to allow the Holy Ghost to close. Joseph was sold into slavery. He was sold into slavery by his own brothers. There's going to be times where your own brothers and sisters will turn against you. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Don't leave the church. Don't leave your family. Stay faithful to God. Don't let one or two people take you from the presence of God and what God is doing in your life. And it says that when Joseph and his brothers had their first in encounter over the years, that Joseph looked at him and says, What you meant for harm, but God intended for good to accomplish what now is being done. But God, now I'm in a place where I'm going to save your life. But God. There's a but God in your story today. Because but God is the story of every believer. But God tells the world your hope is in the Lord. In Romans 5, 6, and 8, it says, For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man through perhaps the good man somehow would dare to even die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But God. Some of you need a new but God encounter in your life. Some of you need a new refreshing of God's power and his presence in your life. Honey, I know what it is to go through the motions. The Holy Spirit wants to break us. He wants to break us. He wants to get us into a place where we can experience the supernatural things of God. But we've got to be broken. We can't get stuck in what we're facing right now. You've got to change your problem into the answer by God. I want you that need a new but God encounter in your life, I want you to come. I want you to stand up here. The Holy Ghost is going to. I want to use the word. He's going to bring new revival in your spirit, a new freshness in your spirit to go on. Some of you 
have been through some dark trials in your life. But God, can you believe him today? Can you believe him that he can take you through the storm, that he can take you through whatever it is you're going through? If that's you, I want you to come up here right now, and I want you to stand at these altars. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mandilia Mata. Mili, come on. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Everybody else start praying. Start praying out. I'm believing for but God breakthroughs up here this morning. Monday, there's nothing impossible with God. Monday, if you need healing this morning, if you need a breakthrough this morning, but God is able. But God is able. Our worship team is going to sing and play. I'm going to lay my hands on you.